E-N-S-C-A-L You are now rocking with that dude Pascal We be going wild, Haitian in the building So, so, so original, got the haters, got your feelings Get your hands up to the ceiling And keep them held high, cause St. Louis is already Forget about it, goodbye, hold on, we just saying hi Find somebody, rise up, weekdays, catch us live Somebody, let's go Good morning Good afternoon and good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Pascal Show. Hope you guys are all doing well out there. Hope this show finds you in good spirits, all of that good stuff. Man, we got some interesting breaking news. Um, Yeah, I was going to be doing something completely different, and then this news broke, but that's how the news is, okay? So I wanted to hop on here and give you guys this breaking, breaking news. Um, Man. This is an interesting one. Again, I hope you guys are all doing well well out there. Like I said, was planning on talking about something completely different, and this has come up. All right? So we are going to be talking about this. We're going to take a little bit of a trip down memory lane as well because this, the reason why, at least for me, this was the start of... I'll explain it in a little bit, okay? Before we jump into everything, all right? So please, guys, before we get into all of this, into this conversation, trust me, I'll explain everything, all right? I know I just kind of stopped dead in my tracks, but I'll explain here in a little bit. So do me a favor, hit that like button, just a a little bit of housekeeping. This is breaking, breaking news, okay? Breaking news. So please do me a favor, hit that like button down below, Hit it, hit it, hit it. Send it past as many likes as you can. That'll be greatly appreciated. This is breaking news. Huge update in the OJ Simpson saga. Okay. We got some things we got to talk about. So hit that like button down below, please. And thank you. Hit that reaction button if you're watching on other platforms like Facebook. Okay. Do not forget to hit that follow button on Facebook, X, TikTok, Instagram, follow me on those platforms, please, and thank you. But if you're watching on YouTube, please be sure to crush that subscribe button. That'd be greatly appreciated. If you want to support the channel and you're watching on YouTube, hit that join button down below, become a member. That'd be greatly appreciated. All right. If you want to support even more, go over to Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the Pascal show. You can also check out my merch page if you want to support the show even more. Check out pascalmerch.com. Okay, guys. All right, guys. Let's 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 get into this. We gotta we got some things to talk about. Okay. This is breaking news, which is very, very shocking and very surprising to me. Um, just to be completely honest. So we're gonna get straight into it. OJ Simpson has passed away at the age of 60, 76. I'm sorry. At the age of 76, he lost he lost his life due to cancer. Now, I know that there's going to be certain corners of the world that are very that are going to feel some type of way about this information. All right? We're going to get into this conversation cuz there's a lot that we got to talk about and honestly honestly He's had quite the life. And yes, there was like a FX original series revolving around his trial. Okay. Because he was alleged of taking the life of uh, his ex-wife at the time, uh, Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman. Uh, But... He's obviously had a lot that has happened in his life surrounding before and after this trial, after he was acquitted and all that. And I have to say that his trial, to me, was the first introduction to true crime for me, okay? I was just a kid when this whole thing went on. I think this was one of the first, his trial, I think that was one of the first to ever be televised, one of the biggest high-profile cases to ever be televised 
on television. Okay. Pretty wild stuff. So it is interesting that we are talking about this. And of course, he is still, his case is still true crime heavy. People are still talking about this case. People still have been throwing in their theories and all that. It's pretty insane and pretty wild. And yes, the world is split. Some people are probably rejoicing right now. And then there are some people out here that are really mourning his demise. Just like during that trial, it was very much split down the middle. Some people felt like he did it. Some other people felt like he didn't. It's a very interesting situation. Very interesting. Very interesting, nonetheless. So we got a couple of articles uh, we're going to look at here. Of course, this is the main thing. I mean, he lost his life after a cancer battle at the age of 76. OJ Simpson is no longer with us. All right. Now, a lot of people, just saying this out loud, real quick. I know that a lot of people would sit here and say, oh, yeah, you know, when he, after he was acquitted, oh, I'm sure he lived a good life. I'm sure he was fine, so on and so forth. Well, it didn't look like he did. He was doing fine. Obviously, he went and was arrested and was thrown in prison for a little while for trying to retrieve some of his memorabilia back. Well, actually, he was forcibly trying to get his memorabilia back, okay? I don't know if you guys remember any of this. And like, this is like a trip down memory lane. Then, of course, let's not forget the man had the audacity to write, to say that he was going to write a book called If I Was Going to Do It, This Is What I Would Have Done type thing. Like I said, just not so great situations revolving around OJ after he was acquitted from that trial. Not so great, long story short. But I digress. We got to get into this. It is pretty crazy. And I even see it in the in the chat. You see what I'm saying? I even see it in the family discussion right now. Some of you guys feel some type of way about this. And some of y'all don't feel some type of way about this. So I leave it up to you guys, okay? Nonetheless, a life has been lost. A life that we all know, a name, a household name, whether it was notorious or if it was beloved, doesn't matter. It was an, a life and a name that touched a lot of our, our lives, a lot of all of our lives, actually, to a certain extent, whether it was from the trial or from his days on the field or the times that he was on, on camera acting and all that, doesn't matter. He touched our lives in some in some shape or form, it is a loss that it is a life and a soul that is no longer on this planet. So we have to put that in consideration. Okay. But let's continue. Let's get into this. Okay. So OJ Simpson gone at the age of 76 after cancer battle. So one of the most infamous high profile Americans of all time is dead after a cancer battle. The former NFL great who stood trial for the double M for his wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ron Goldman, in the 90s, only to be acquitted, passed away Wednesday in Las Vegas, this according to his family. So it says here on um, in here, like they put up a tweet. So they said on April 10th, our father, Orenthal James Simpson, that's what OJ stands for, Orenthal James, okay, succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren. During this time of transition, his family asked that you please respect their, their wishes for privacy and grace, the Simpson family. And I can only imagine what they're, they're going through and how they feel, okay? He did have loved ones, and he was surrounded by his children and grandchildren, okay? They say he was surrounded by his children and grandchildren when he, he died uh, Wednesday, Wednesday night. Simpson's attorney also confirmed his demise to TMZ. 
So, OJ had been reportedly, he's he reportedly been battling prostate cancer for in recent years, and his health took a turn for the worse of late, with him landing in hospice care within the last within the past few months. Word about his diagnosis first made the rounds in February. I even remember that. I remember that as well. When a local outlet reported it, although do details were hazy, as was OJ's response to the news at the time, when he denied he was in hospice, but didn't address the cancer report. Adding to the mystery was the fact that OJ actually touched on a cancer diagnose, diagnosis in 2023 in a video he posted when he said he'd caught some form of cancer but suggested he'd beaten it. In any case, the cancer came back and claimed his life about a year later. There he is right here, too. OJ had been, OJ had been looking frail. In the, in the lead up to his passing, including during an outing in January when he was spotted using a cane. And I guess this is the photo. Yep, this is in January. <clears throat> so things were not looking good a few months ago. All right. Last time OJ posted a video of himself talking uh, was was a video of him talking about the Super Bowl where he said he was rooting for his former team, the San Francisco Niners, or 49ers, I'm sorry. Uh, he seemed to be in good spirits then. He was seated in the, cl in the clip and uh, talking from the backyard of a home. Uh, it goes without saying, OJ's life was uh, momentous for a variety of reasons, lots of good and bad, especially in his in his later post football years before that he was a beloved all american hero on the field a Heisman winner from USC and a buffalo bills legend even after football he was a bona fide a lister in hollywood acting in tons of movies and tv shows and famously serving as the face and pitchman for hertz for many, many years. Now, I even, I mean, I wasn't even alive at, you know, at this moment, okay? But I remember, the, I mean, I feel like they've played this, this uh, Hertz commercial so many times. You know what I'm saying? From every documentary I've seen about OJ's uh, life and the trial itself, they played this commercial, my Lord, okay? Crazy stuff, right? But I even remember this. I mean, shoot, I feel like I feel like they played this yesterday. <laughs> you know what I mean? I remember this. He's like jumping over a, a, a suitcase and then running into the into this 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 car and all that. I mean, it's it's crazy. But anyway, I just remember, I just remember this like like it was yesterday. Because of all the documentaries I've seen. My lord, I've seen so many documentaries revolving around this. Of course. All that goodwill left in nineteen in the 19, 1990s when he was accused of a of the heinous murders, and of course this is Nicole Brown Simpson, okay, his wife at that time, but then they got divorced. I guess they had a very nasty divorce, and then he ah I mean, oh we're gonna talk about it. Okay, we're going to talk about it because it's part of his life. All right. Uh, his demise marks the end of a multi, multi decade saga of crime and intrigue surrounding OJ, which peaked after the brutal slayings of Nicole and Ron in 1994. And in the aftermath, what was dubbed the trial of the century at that time, when OJ was prosecuted on national television. Like I said, I remember this being like the first one, maybe it was the first televised high profile trials. The first one ever. 
for everyone to see, which I thought was interesting. I, I still don't understand why they decided to make that national television, why they decided to bring cameras in to the courtroom for that case. Now, I mean, now it's kind of normal to see cameras in the in in the trial, you know, in the courtroom and all that. But I'm wondering what inspired them to say, yeah, bring these cameras in. Let's 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 just make this a, a Hollywood affair. You know, let's 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 let everybody see it. I'm wondering because at the end of the day, it it, it was a really tough trial because there were already people that thought. I mean, we gonna we gonna say it. The racial lines were very much laid down on the ground. I mean, there was a lot of racial tension during that time. Rodney King and all that had happened just a, just a, a little bit before this. So then you have this that goes down, and this became extremely racially split. I mean, yes, I'm, uh, you know, obviously there were some black people that thought that he didn't. There were some white people that thought that he didn't do it, right? But at the same time, it was very much split down the middle. A lot of racial tension was happening during that time. And I don't know why. Like, I still am wondering why they televised this for everyone to see because I feel like it only stoked the flames and stoked the, 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 the racial tensions that were going on during that time. If I'm correct, didn't the, the uh, uh, riots in Watts happen during that time as well? Around that time? Somewhere around within those uh, a couple years? Wasn't around that time too? Like I said, it was, it was not so great. <laughs> no bueno. No bueno. Okay. So there was a lot of racial tension during that time. And then they still had this televised on the idiot box. I'm still trying to understand why. I'm still trying to understand why. But nonetheless, it happened. This happened in 1994. And this for me, okay, this whole trial, dealing with the, the demise of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman right here, those two that lost their lives. I mean, this was the first time I was ever introduced to true crime. And maybe this is the origin story for a lot of y'all too. I mean, every newspaper, I mean, and this is before YouTube even existed, right? Every, every, my Lord, every newspaper, magazine, every high profile, well respected, news outlet all the way to the rags, all right? We're covering nothing but O.J. Simpson's trial. Nothing but that. It was insane. And back then, you know, the internet was not the internet, okay? People would just have to wait at bated breath for the next article or for the next issue of that magazine to come out with more bombshell information. It was insane. And yes, there was a lot of rags, a lot of uh, rumors and, and BS. I remember this like it was yesterday. You know, I don't know if you guys remember like the sun, not the sun uh, that exists now, but like, I think it was called the sun. There was also uh national Enquirer. all these, just the rag, Article like these rags, okay, that were being sold right by the checkout counter at your local grocery store, okay, would be just filled with nothing but his face or Nicole Brown Simpson's face or Ron Goldman. Does anybody remember that? And it would be every five seconds something new. I mean, I saw articles that were something crazy like aliens made him do it, stuff like that. Like it was insane. Tabloidy type of BS. OK, but nonetheless, this was one of the biggest, highest profile cases I had ever been introduced to in my life. And it was the first time I was ever introduced to true crime. I mean, some semblance of true crime. Right. 
I don't know if true crime was dawned during that time or not. In fact, let's not forget the white Bronco. Remember? Remember the white Bronco. Everybody in their mom was watching that. Everybody. I know exactly where I was when that went down. I know exactly where I was. You see what I'm saying? It's so iconic. It was such a big moment in that time because no one has ever seen anything like that before. That I could literally give you a breakdown of exactly where I was when that whole thing went down. It's pretty crazy. Like I said, this was part of a lot of our lives. This trial. Pretty crazy. Pretty, pretty crazy. But let's get back into this. We'll, we'll talk more about this here in a little bit. Okay? But this is crazy. All right. Of course, this is Ron Goldman. And may they both rest in peace, of course. You know, Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. But this is uh, pretty crazy stuff, right? Even before he was apprehended by police. Oh, we're already going into that. For questioning in the immediate aftermath of these of this tragedy, OJ led cops on a low-speed chase in a Fort Bronco on LA freeways, a moment that was nationally televised. Like I said, I remember this. And one of the most dramatic shared experiences in modern American history. Yes, like I said, I remember this white Bronco video or this. I remember the, the, the helicopter cam hovering over the white Bronco following him. Basically, he, they said that he was in the back of the ride, his 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 boy, one of his good friends was driving the car. He was in the back of the car with a, with a, you know, with his, with a weapon pointed to his head saying that he was going to actually pull the, you know what I'm saying? Do this unthinkable thing to himself. So cops stayed back, right? They stayed back and they just slowly drove and, and followed him for miles down this highway. They shut down the, uh, the highway. Like, it, it was insane, guys. Pretty crazy stuff. Okay? So, once he was caught, a case started to form with him as the prime suspect. Obviously, I don't blame him. After all of that, I would be looking at him it sideways, too. Prosecutors eventually charged him, alleging OJ carried out the horrific attacks, okay, and the demise of Nicole and Ron at her Brentwood home on June 12th, 1994. OJ hired a, a so-called dream team of defense lawyers led by late Johnny Cochran, who ran point and helped pick apart the state's case. A fundamental element Cochran latched onto during this onto, onto during this trial was the fact that LAPD detective Mark Furman had made some very unthinkable remarks, okay, some racist remarks in the past, which OJ's defense team suggested could have led him to planting a glove found at, at Simpson's home. This also led to another pivotal point in the trial when OJ's team suggested he be allowed to try on the gloves as you see right here. Try on the gloves in the court for the jury, and they ended up not fitting him perfectly. That prompted Cochran to eventually utter the famous line during closing arguments, namely, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. In the end, the jury bought that defense. He was acquitted of these M charges to the shock of much of the nation. However, not too long after that, he was sued by the Goldmans and Browns in civil court for the wrongful death. And the case played out in Santa Monica 
where a jury found him liable for the demise of Nicole and Ron. He was ordered to pay tens of millions in damages. Despite being dodged by the families for the money, sorry, despite being dogged by the families for the money, OJ mostly avoided paying the judgment and event eventually fled Los Angeles and settled down in Las Vegas, where other legal troubles started to find him, including tax woes and eventually another criminal case. In 2007, he was accused of busting into a Vegas hotel room in an attempt to recover sports memorabilia that he believed had been stolen from him, rolling up to confront the new owner with a bunch of goons in tow, armed with weapons too, according to prosecutors. Here's the, of course, this is him at, at his parole hearing. He was eventually arrested, charged, and prosecuted, and ultimately committed, uh, convicted on all the charges. OJ was then imprisoned for a long time, until he was released on parole in 2017. Once OJ got out of prison, he ended up settling down in Sid Sin City, where he lived in a relatively private and peaceful life out of the public eye, although he was active on social media, often posting on Twitter slash X with opinions on sports, politics, and other topics. Now, the thing is, is I'm, I'm going to be real, okay? I'm going to keep it a buck. Whether you think he, whether you believe he did this, that unthinkable crime to Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown or not, after all this, I would just disappear. That's just me. I go live my life. I try to find happiness. I'd work on myself if that was the situation. And I would just go, I'd just move on. I would just straight up move on. You would not in no way, shape, or form see me on social media trying to put in my commentary on other situations, on other crimes, sports, politics. Any of that stuff, I would not put in, nah. Because no matter what, there's a lot of people out here that are going to take that, dissect it, chop it up, make it sound like you're saying something that you that maybe you're not trying to say. There's plenty of people out here that still believe that he did it. There still will be people out here that believe that he did it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many ways he sits here and says, oh, yeah, you know, I didn't I didn't do it. Here's Here's proof that I didn't do it. You know what I mean? No one's going to listen to that. They're going to be like, all right, bro. All right, bro. We we have our thoughts. Okay? We, the general public, don't fully believe you. You can sit here, do everything you can. But if you don't have if, – but if you do not have smoking gun evidence that's going to absolutely 110% exonerate you from the crimes that you are – that you have were alleged of doing, at least by the court of public opinion, then it's going to stay stuck on you. It's like having the scarlet letter. It's going to be on you for good. doesn't matter how hard you try. And not once has there ever been any information, any smoking gun evidence for it to sway anyone from thinking otherwise. Okay? So, like I said, I you would not you would not find me all up in the internet streets trying to put in my two cents about any type of murder trials, any other people that have committed committed crimes, etc. Nah, you won't see me out there. I'll be I'll be living my life, living off the fat of the land. Real talk, okay? Real talk. Of course, his reputation was completely destroyed by then, partially because main, many believe he actually confessed to the 94 unalivings in a book and subsequent interview he did in the 2000s touting it as hypothetical, uh, hy hypothetical, sorry. Don't know why I couldn't read that one. Hypothetical plus everything else that had 
transpired over the years. And of course, this is man. Like I'm telling you guys right now, this was the wildest, most gruesome scenes. And the thing is, is that they were showing this stuff all over the place. All over the place, y'all. Okay? It was insane what they were putting out here. What people were sharing um, and all that. And um, what, uh, I'm sorry, what the news outlets, because it's not like people were sharing these things. Well, you know, not not regular, like these weren't amateur these weren't amateur uh, journalists that were putting this stuff out here. These were actual professional journalists that were just full full spreads in these magazines and and and, uh, and newspapers, full spreads of everything. Inside Edition, I remember, was sharing all kinds of six stuff. uninterrupted minutes. Just absolutely crazy. The the scene okay all the photos and whatnot i'm i'm not going to show you guys those i mean if we if we look at a video that takes us a you know gives gives us a, a little bit of a, a glimpse inside the actual crime scene it is what it is but at the same time like the stuff here is so so bad okay Th this was a gruesome scene i mean the the descriptions and the information that they said about how these two lost their lives is disturbing and would take a very strong individual to be able to do what they did, what this person did to these two people. I mean, it's crazy, okay? So, and this part is really insane to me too, this part right here. It says, and yet... It was still approached. He was still approached by lots of fans post prison, regardless, posing for pics often. He also still had the support of some of his family, including his children. And OJ was 76. Now, the thing is, like I said, it is pretty crazy. All of this. Okay. And yes, Jonathan, in, in general, the 90s were extremely racially charged in general. And I mean, well, it's, you know, the, the, the times are still racially charged to a certain extent, you know, it, 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 you know, the, the vibe out here, the vibrations out here, it just depends, you know, just a few years ago, it was extremely racially, extremely racially charged just a few years ago, it's starting to, it's still there. I mean, racism, et cetera, all that stuff still exists. It's still a problem. There's still a lot of people out here that need to change their ways or unlearn the hate that they have in their hearts, all that stuff, right? But there is still, it, it sometimes it just is at an all-time high where it's hypersensitive, you know, that nerve is just exposed and it just gets, keeps getting hit every time and time and time again. And then it'll, It'll calm down. And I feel like this is the calm right now. But I feel like it's going to rev back up here again soon. For sure. It's going to rev back up. Okay? So, yeah. Pretty crazy stuff. Um, but let's continue on, guys. Let's continue on. Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be... I see, yeah. Yeah. The ch hey, the chat's going to be divided. I get it. Because there's going to be people who believe he didn't do anything. And then there's people who believe that he did a lot of things. You know, uh, it is what it is. You know, it, it, unfortunately, that's just kind of the way it is. The reason why it is that way is because there hasn't been anything to show whether or not he did it without a shadow of a doubt. That's unfortunate. There's the court of public opinion. Yes, there's the the Bronco Drive. There's a lot that happened inside that home that, I mean, someone very physically strong, someone physical, very athletic. If they were to do it alone, this it's just very, very difficult for someone to be able to do that if you're not physically fit. There's a lot to put into consideration. The strength in which, in how these two were left behind, what they 
what this monster or possible monsters did to these two takes a lot of strength. This was a scene of passion. This was a crime of passion for sure. Now, could it be? And I, I understand that we're talking about something that's old now, right? It's just decades old now. But was this done by somebody that was an ex-lover or was it done by an ex-husband like O.J. Simpson? Those are the things that are asked. And then, of course, because of uh, uh, Detective Furman uh, and his and his very questionable ways, okay, his past, they were able to play that note. They were able to play that card and throw that on the table on top of everything else that was going on in the world. The zeitgeist at that time was still calming down from, from Rodney King. Tensions, racial tensions were very, very high at that time. So again, it's like any other case that where you, you don't find the body, you don't find that person, or you don't find you don't find the smoking gun evidence that it's going to be a split room. There always will be that split room. It doesn't matter. And it's okay for people to be team OJ or anti. It's totally understandable. Because there's no solid evidence of him actually doing it. That's the issue. So, and of course, there's theories out there. Plenty of theories. Shoot, I have, I, I heard a theory of OJ's son had everything to do with this. It had nothing to do with him. But then he just took the fall for his son. I mean, it, it's crazy. I heard the, a rumor about uh, uh, OJ's friend who actually drove the, the Bronco, that he had his hand in it. I also heard that it was OJ and his, you know, one of his friends that went in there and did this. This was a two-person job, not just a one-person job. You see what I'm saying? And then, yes, uh, lost little ones, okay? That's the other thing, too. OJ's son, Sonny. Yeah, that's what I heard too. But I also heard that OJ has some serious rage in him as well. <clears throat> that's not good. Okay. But then you do stupid stuff like, oh, I'm going to write this book. If I was going to do it, this is what I would have done. Man, that's dumb, yo. That's dumb. That's dumb. And why would anybody want to do that? Like I said, if I was if I was in his shoes and I was acquitted of doing something, the monster could still be out there. I'm disappearing. I'm going to go live my life. I'm going to live off the fat of the land. I'm going to turn into a cowboy. <laughs> okay? I'm going to live out in the desert. I'm going to keep my my I, I keep my life to myself, I'm not going to be hopping up on these these videos, trying to be all up in these in these conversations about what's going on in pop culture. I would have nothing to do with anything because the world be, would be looking at me still as the person that took the life of someone that I once loved. That's crazy to me to be out here like that. I'd be gone. Okay? I'd be gone, y'all. Oh, God, I'd be out. So... It is crazy when you hear stuff like that. But let me play this news clip for you guys really quick. Let's take a look. Hit the number one. Let me know you guys. Very can much this. learning breaking news into the newsroom just literally minutes ago, learning that O.J. Simpson has died. Of course, he uh, was wildly known as a professional football player for years until he then stood trial for the death of his former wife, Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman following a car chase that was mm. captured on live TV <clears throat> and carried around the world. Uh, he was found not guilty in that case. Folks will famously remember the line there, if the glove does not fit, you don't convict. Uh, he has had a troubled 
stretch of t you must acquit. I'm sorry. He has had a troubled uh, back and forth with the law. Now, now, how did this guy not know that that phrase? I mean, that that everybody knew that phrase. I'm playing that back a little bit. Found the world. Uh, he was found not guilty in that case. Folks will famously remember the line there. If the glove does not fit, you don't convict. Uh, he has had a troubled stretch of t you must acquit i'm sorry he has had a troubled uh, <laughs> back and forth with the i'm sorry i feel like his, one of his producers is in the background going you must acquit <laughs> it's not convict damn you must acquit you know what i mean hold on guys let me slow this chat down here for a second okay let me let me slow this down right quick let me Slow down on nice and slow like. Okay. Actually, hold up. We're going to get straight to it. Okay. Skadoosh. All right, let's get into it. Law and the year since that back in 1994. But again, the headline here this morning, OJ Simpson is dead. And we have a quick look at the tweet here that came in from his family confirming that April 10th, our father, Orenthal James Simpson, succumbed to a battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren during this time of transition. His family asks that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace. That coming from the Simpson family. Much more on this throughout the morning across all of our digital mm -mm -mm. platforms. Yeah, I mean, let's be real. I mean, at the end of the day, a, 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 a family lost a loved one. Whether they liked him still or not, because clearly there are family members that believe he did it, and there's family members that don't believe he did it. You see what I'm saying? And I also say this a lot, but it is true. Never underestimate the power of denial if he did it. <laughs> I, I have to keep saying that. It's, it's frustrating, right? It's frustrating because we will never know. And there's, I'm sure, okay, I will say this. I believe in my heart of hearts, he knows something about it. Either he did something that he had his hand. He played a hand in the unaliving of these two innocent lives, or he knew about something, but he was just holding the information. That's what I think. I don't think he just woke up one day or got the news that she, she was that his ex-wife and Ron Goldman were gone. That this gruesome tragedy happened in Brentwood, California. I, I don't. I don't. I feel like he knew something. Does it mean that he had his hand in it? No. But I feel like he knows something. That there's information that he has. And now what's interesting is that information just left with him. That information left with him. You got to remember, too. We don't have anything else from him. Or even outside of the trial. No other pieces of evidence. No, nobody else got arrested in connection to this tragedy. Nothing. And I'm talking about during the trial and even after he was acquitted. There's something interesting. And I understand that's going to split the room. I understand that there are people out here that believe that he didn't do it. And that's fine. I get that. But he did some very odd things before he was arrested and even after he was acquitted that are just very odd. And it makes you wonder why would anyone even think about doing stuff like that? Why would anyone do Oh, I'm going to write this book, and it's called, If I Was Going to Do It, This Is What I'd Do. Now, I understand, like, and I'm not going to sit here and say I understand, but I can see why somebody would eventually lose their minds and do something as terrible as what he did, which is he brought in a bunch of his goons, went into this person's uh, uh, place in Las Vegas, demanding his memorabil memorabilia back, right? He held that person basically hostage. He came in there with a, a group of dudes with weapons, etc. Damn right. Lock him up. I get him being 
frustrated if he was innocent. I get him being frustrated. I get him being at that point in his at that place in his mind where it, he just snaps. He's like, everything I've worked for is gone, has been stripped from me. All my money, all my all my fame. I used to be America's sweetheart. And now I don't even have my memorabilia from all the hard work I've done, from all the things I've gained from hustling, literally. What? I could see somebody losing their minds over that. I definitely could. But after you've just been acquitted for the unaliving of your ex-wife and your ex-wife's fr uh, friend, you most definitely do not put violence in your vernacular right after that, too. Years after that, for the rest of your life, you have to walk around here like a mother-loving monk. Walking around stoic as hell. Peaceful. Peace and love, man. Act like you're high 24-7. That's it. Everything's about vibration, bro. You know what I mean? The universe is one, man. Whoa, man. You know what I'm saying? Not, ah, arg. Arg me matey, got to get me booty. That's ridiculous, yo. That's ridiculous. That doesn't help your cause. That doesn't help your situation. It makes it worse, baby. Damn. You see what I'm saying? So in my mind, I'm like, is he really thinking? And I get for those of y'all who are out here going, no, he didn't do it. No. He didn't do it, man. This is the juice, man. Okay, fine. But then see how he acts after he was acquitted. Not very diplomatic. Not very OJ. Like he, how he's depicted on TV. Suddenly he's out here doing erratic things. Doing very stupid things. Like trying to write a... Trying to write a book. Then he goes and does something like that which gets him thrown in jail for a long time. Then also on top of that, he gets he gets set free, right? He gets set free. And he's taking his phone and he's putting in his two cents, his commentary and all that. Come on, guys. The what? The what? Think about it for a second. Is that somebody in their right mind? I want to say no. Just think about the actions. Just think about the actions around it, okay? Just think about the actions around it. That's why, like, I keep teetering back and forth. Some days I'm like, oh, yeah, him guilty. And then there's days I'm like, well, maybe he didn't do it. And there's still a possibility he didn't do it. But then I also see how he acts out here, how he presents himself. It's how he does and, and approaches situations. It's the little things, guys. It's the little things that we do that come, to, come around and bite us in the butt. It's the little things, y'all. So I see this and I'm going, okay. Doesn't seem very... Doesn't seem to make sense, but okay. You see what I'm saying? I got this video that um, I wanted to share with you guys. Um, first off, I am going to share this first. Shout out to Court TV. Let me just grab this really quick. Because uh, there's a couple things we're going to be watching, okay? But like I said, I mean, here it is. There's no right answer. That's And that's what's frustrating about it, too. You know what I mean? It, there's no right answer to this. Zero. Because we don't know the truth. We don't know what happened, right? We only can go and lean on our speculations. And, the, and of course, lean on the facts that have been put out here. But th even those facts kind of, you know, are straight down the middle. 
It doesn't lean towards the right. It doesn't re- lean towards the left. It's just kind of straight down the middle. And of course, yes, I, I urge every single last one of y'all to, I mean, this is a decades old case. At this point, y'all are already firm in your beliefs. You're already firm in your your thoughts on if him guilty or if him innocence. That's up to you guys. But at the same time, I urge you guys, you know, when you look at the information, you look at the 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 facts that are put out here and you just toss aside a little bit, just toss aside for a second your preconceived notions and your speculations and your judgment on OJ themselves, what of the, uh, himself, what do you come up with at the end of it? Uh, I see somebody said, do a poll. Pascal, do a poll. I'll do a poll. That's fine. I'll do a poll. That's fine. Let me do a poll. <sighs> this is crazy. Because this is this this case is so do- doggone old. This case is so old, bruh. This case is so old. Hold up. Um, Sorry, guys, I got three choices. Okay, let's see. Hold on. Let me make sure this is grammatically correct. Okay. What? Oh, God. Okay, hold on. Sorry, guys. Bang. There it is. Pinned to the top of the chat. Take a look at it. Please vote. There's three different choices. Do you think he did these murders? Okay. Him guilty. Him innocence. Or I'm still on the fence. You got three choices. Make your pick. Or take your pick. Let me grab some of these things really quick. Lily Black, thank you so much. Welcome to the family. Or you may be renewing your membership, but I'd still appreciate you coming back. Thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. Kimberly in Japan, thank you so much for being a member for the past 17 months. I hope Japan is treating you very, very well. Okay. One of my friends just went out there and he said he had a blast out in uh, Japan. One day I'm going to have to hop on a plane and get my butt over there. But anyway, <clears throat> hey, Pascal and fam, my grandparents lived about five or 10 minutes away from OJ. And I remember them talking about all talking all about this, the, the chaos. I bet. I mean, I'm sure media was outside of the house and all that, doing everything they can uh, to get as much information. And of course, this was the hottest topic for a very, very long time. Right. Um, so I can only imagine the media circus that was either outside of his home and outside of Nicole Brown Simpson's home, where, of course, where this the crime scene was. So, uh, yeah, it's crazy. Debbie, thank you so much for the twenty dollar super sticker. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Kristen. Uh, thank you so much for the two. You know what? This just reminded me of something. Holy cow. This just reminded me of something. Okay. Hold on one second, guys. I'm sorry. Give me two seconds. Just give me two seconds. Wow. Okay. Give me two seconds, y'all. Hold on. Come on, where are you at? Okay. Okay. 
Wow. Wow. I can't believe this is a th- troll back. But one of the people that lived in the that lived in like the guest house of OJ Simpson's home. His name, he was an actor out there. I mean, he's still an actor. He's still doing his thing. He's a comedian, actor, that kind of thing. His name is Cato Kalin. Okay. Um, and the interesting part of it is I interviewed him on my show about six years ago. I'm not kidding. We're going to take a look at that video in just a little bit. I'm not kidding. I interviewed this guy, Real Talk. We're going to take a look at that as well. Because I did talk to him about a bunch of things. He was on the show. He was on the show because of being at this convention and all that. Uh, and I had an opportunity to interview him. And 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 um, <clears throat> we talked briefly about OJ. Very briefly about OJ. And, you know, his responses were very interesting, to say the least. Um so we're going to be taking a look at that, uh, and I'm going to show it to you guys. Proof positive. That he's 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 right here. He's right here. Hey, hey, welcome back, welcome back. Right here. Just so you guys can see it. Blam. Okay? All right? And then, of course, there I am, too. Okay? And I had a co-host at that time many, many years ago. Okay? And, uh, yeah, we had a very, very interesting interview. And conversation. So we are going to be taking a look at, at that video in a little bit. Okay. It's crazy. All right. But still, nonetheless, we're going to be taking a look at that because it, it was brief questions because when we did do the interview, they were like, you know, please be mindful of asking any questions about, about the trial, about OJ, you know, still keep it about the, the convention that he's here for. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're gonna. It was a couple of years, man. That was a minute. That was a minute ago. Okay. Um. So we're gonna talk about that in a second. Sorry, guys. A little bit of a left turn, but we're gonna talk about that. Pretzel, thank you so much. Um. Rodney King was uh, was the big thing in 1994. Yes. All very sad and scary for everyone. Yes, it was the very very big thing, and a lot of people were feeling some type of way. Uh. During that time, racial tensions were very very high yeah it, it it was crazy like i said everything was very split down the middle between black and white etc it's crazy charlie miller thank you so much uh already la police had a bad rep for being or, or yep rodney king was beaten by police la cops this was captured on tape and found not guilty in court. Exactly. Bang. That just a quick trip down memory memory lane that had just happened. And then we were going straight into OJ Simpson's trial. So there was all, already a lot of people feeling some type of way like, oh, how can you do this to another black man? So on and so forth. Like I said, tensions were high. And it was really crazy that Rodney King's cops, the ones that were caught on tape, you see it in, well, not in 4K. I think it was like 360 at that time. But you see it, okay, as clear as and it was done at night. But you can see it on video that these men were hurting this this man. Regardless if he was on anything, it doesn't matter what he was on, PCP or anything of that crap. Push all that stuff to the side. They jumped this guy. It was caught on video. And yet these cops were able to walk. So, yeah world was mad. LA, a lot of people in LA were very mad. Okay. Uh, Dolphin, thank you so much for being a member for the past six months. I appreciate that. The dream team was the greatest, greatest defense team ever assembled. There has never been another criminal defendant so well represented. You know what? I will tell you this. I don't disagree with that. I don't. Literally, I don't. We we have seen so many other cases as of late where you can see how they're just falling on their faces, right? 
I mean, shoot, like just just watching Crumbly's uh, lawyer, for example. Ay, ay, ay. Now, don't get me wrong. She got what she got. Crumbly's, bye. See ya, okay? That what they did was wrong and messed up, and they should be locked up. So I'm happy about that. And I'm happy that she had a crappy lawyer, but her crappy, her lawyer was crappy. Extremely bad, okay? Extremely bad, all right? That goes without saying. Kimberly in Japan, thank you so much for the 200 yen. I really do appreciate it, Pascal. I can't appreciate your fairness enough. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard out here for a pimp to, to sit on this fence. It gets very uncomfortable, but I have my thoughts and my theories as well. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I lean more on one side than the other, and I think you guys are catching my drift, okay? Misty Fisher, thank you so much. Uh, Pascal, do your hippie impression one more time, please. Um, okay. Well, you know, this is so crazy, man. You know, we were all about peace and love, man. We're supposed to be about peace and love, man. Good. Okay. Pretzel, thank you so much for becoming a member. Welcome to the family. Just like Pretzel, hit that join button down below, please. And thank you. Penny, thank you so much. Hey, Pascal, what happened to the friend Ace, AC, the guy driving the Bronco? You know what? I don't know. That's one thing I'm still trying to find out, too. Um, just a little bit of an update on that, because that was very interesting nonetheless, right? Something to think about um, and something to look into for sure, okay? But anyway, uh, we got a couple things I want to share with you guys. So, Court TV, where is it? Yes. No, yes. Yes? Yes. Here it is, I think. Yes, Court TV. Let's take a look at this. All right, back on the record in the uh, Simpson matter, Mr. Simpson is again present before the court with his counsel, Mr. Shapiro, Mr. Allman, Mr. Cochran, Mr. Douglas, Mr. Bailey, people represented by Ms. Clark, Mr. Darden, and Mr. Hodgman. The jury is not present. Deputy Magnero, may we have the jury, please? All right, counsel in the audience, please be seated. All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to begin with the opening statements made by the lawyers in the case. Let me remind you from my instructions to you yesterday that any statements made to you by the attorneys during the course of their opening statements are not evidence and should not be considered as such by you. These opening statements are normally given by the attorneys to sort of give you an overall view of the evidence that they intend to present. It's to give you a roadmap, so to speak, as to how to evaluate the evidence. This case, as you know, will be relatively long, and by necessity, some of this evidence will be presented to you out of chronological or logical order. Now, uh, real quick, my bad. This is the wrong thing. I thought this was something different. This is the whole doggone opening statements of the whole fracking thing. Um, hold on. Hold on, guys. I thought it was more like a documentary of some sort. So I was wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Uh, hold on. And while I'm doing this really quick, guys, there's a poll attached to the top of the chat please go check it out if you can that'll be greatly appreciated you know it, it's it's interesting because you know we're taking a taking a trip down memory lane y'all taking a quick trip down memory lane and um i think it's important to see all of this you know maybe not all of it but you know, a portion of it at least, right? Um, again, I'm still very shocked Okay, this might make a little bit more sense. Let's take a look at this. Let's 
try this one here. But yeah, please go over there. Put in your vote. Let me know your thoughts. Okay? Let's take a look at this one. This week, in OJ25, Christopher Darden puts the prosecution's case... Imagine that. OJ25. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... One of the biggest unsolved cases ever. You understand that, right? Just because he was acquitted, and I know a lot of people in a lot of parts of the world are very happy about that. There's still... There's still no one that has been uh, that has been held account accountable for this at all. No one. <laughs> that's crazy to me, guys. All right, all right. Let's take a look at this. But OJ twenty five. That's crazy. And you know what? Let me just say this too. Ain't no way I want to leave my legacy behind, and everyone is still just thinking about like. There's no way I would want my legacy to be this. Not not at all. Would you would you want your legacy to be this? Okay. Hail to the no. All right. So sad. No one was held accountable. Accountable. Okay. No one. That doesn't make sense. So still. <laughs> still, we don't know anything. That's crazy, guys. That's crazy. And scary. If you really think about it, very, very scary. However way you want to look at that. He's on the line when he has the former football great try on the leather gloves found at the Bundy and Rockingham crime scenes. I'm Roger Cossack, and this is OJ25. OJ25. Hamburger. Darden, you may call the people's next witness. The people call Brenda Vimich to the stand, Your Honor. V as in Victor, E-M-I-C-H. Ms. Vimich, who are you employed by? Bloomingdale's. Is that a Bloomingdale's credit card safety seat? Yes. Okay. To the right of the 70268, we see the number two. What does that indicate? Um, the quantity that were purchased is two. Two pairs of Aris gloves? Yes. Okay. Now, the style number on the sales receipt indicates 70268. Is that correct? Yes. Did Bloomingdale's ever sell an Aris glove style number 70268? No, they did not. To borrow a phrase, is that a mistake? Yes. The mistake is that the eight should have been a three. Is that right? Yes. The day of the glove demonstration, the prosecution was putting into the record the fact that um, Nicole had bought these gloves for O.J. Simpson as a gift from Bloomingdale's. Is there a signature on the uh, credit card you see? Yes. Can you read that signature to us? Nicole Brown. Have you ever seen uh, these gloves sold anywhere else in the United States? No, I have not. Not these gloves. Mr. Darden, you may call your next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Rubin. Mr. Rubin, who was your employer during 1990? Aris Isotoner. And what was your position at that time? I was vice president and general manager. Let me show you the glove marked 164A, the Rockingham glove. Is this a glove that we showed you during the afternoon break today? Yes, it is. Looking at that glove, can you tell us which style of model that glove is? This is uh, the right hand of uh, style 70263. This is interesting. Isn't it interesting that they brought the one of the heads of the company that actually makes the glove? Like, I'm wondering if they're going to bring the architect that actually built, designed Nicole Brown Simpson's home for crying out loud. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's is this your glove that you made? That your your company makes, like wh what? 
let's talk about your the manufacturer of your glove. And it's like, I have nothing to do with the unaliving of these two people. And if this monster decided to use isotones, it ain't on me. I just make gloves, man. Can I go back to my factory and make gloves? I mean, damn. And how can you tell that? Well, first of all, the model was exclusive to Bloomingdale's. It was only manufactured and distributed to them. And because of this particular type of sewing, which was unique to this model, and the way the vent is put into the palm, uh, this could really not be any other style except 70263. Let me show you what has been marked as People's 77, the bunion. Is this a glove that I showed you earlier today? Yes, it is. I'm looking at this glove. Can you tell us the style of this glove? This is the left hand of a style 70263. Mr. Rubin, you said that 8% of the gloves sold of the extra large brown in color uh, Aris leather lights would be... uh, 8% of the actual brown. Out of the 12 pair per prepack, one pair would be extra large. Okay, so how many in 1990 then brown extra larges were sold? 300 totally available, possibly sold 200 to 240. I remember Chris being baited and taunted into that and Chris was um, hot headed. Um, But like all of us, because we believe the glove was his, sure, try it on. Well, at this time, the people would ask that Mr. Uh, Simpson step forward and try on the, the uh, glove recovered at Bundy as well as the glove recovered at Rockingham. Now, I, I have to say this. This allegedly was the moment that just blew the lid off of getting this saved, allegedly, O.J. Simpson by putting on these doggone gloves. I, I need you guys to see this, okay? Look at this. Take a look at this. I saw the forlorn looks on everyone's face from law clerks to, Mm-mm. I think we may have had Phil Van Adder there at that point, but to a secretary and I said, what's wrong? What, what could have happened today? This was going to be a good day for us. You can do that seated there. All right. And I think so the jury can see, I'll ask Mr. Simpson to stand. One other thing I want to also point out, okay? One other thing I want to point out. He's wearing gloves before, before j- the fact that he's wearing gloves. Just he's putting on little these latex gloves. I just want to point that out really quick, all right? Just saying that real quick. Let's move on. Which glove do you have? The glove, Your Honor. All right. The day that he had the glove demonstration, that wasn't something that was planned, but the defense planned to goad him into it. They wanted him to do it, and he fell for it. Christopher, you're okay, but you've got the cojones of a stud field mouse. (laughs) So why would you say a thing like that to me? I said, because that glove won't fit OJ, and if you don't ask him to try it on, I will. He took the bait. As is. Damn. Damn. Our practice with these gloves, Mr. Simpson will have a pair of latex gloves on while doing this. Handy, Mr. Simpson, the uh, that glove parking in. That's people 77. He's wearing gloves. And then he's putting on gloves. I just want to, I, I'm just, and then he's putting on, uh, look at this. <laughs> it's the, see, I'm, I'm having a hard time but putting on the glove. This glove ain't coming on. Uh, my, my hand's too thick. My hand's too big to get into the damn glove. Come on now. Take a look. Take a look. I remember someone looked at me with kind of these, sad eyes and said you don't know what happened do you and that's when i found out about the glove demonstration also 
This is uh, People's 164A. Is that the right hand glove? Yes, sir. All right. I was sitting in the front row. He wasn't really tugging on it. It was sort of like a like an uh, an actor's portrayal of how you put on a glove. I was there in the courtroom, literally two feet away, when he tried on the glove. I was shocked at the incompetence of the prosecution in allowing him to try on the glove. With yeah, they shouldn't have let him wear those gloves, Dag Nabbit. You got to remember, it's the, it's the, it, and, and Melanie, yes, you're right. It's, it's the, a latex glove to preserve the evidence. Absolutely. But you, you try putting on just someone out there when you get some time, this is so random, but if you got some isotones, I know that's really random to say, and you got some latex gloves just laying around. I don't know. Maybe, maybe y'all are aestheticians acet out there. Okay. And you have some latex gloves just laying around. Maybe y'all are chefs and you actually have some and, and your hands get cold too and you got some isotones. Try putting on latex gloves and then putting on the isotones on top of that. And tell me you're not gonna have you're not gonna be in struggle city trying to put those doggone gloves on. I'm just saying. Also, you got to remember there's a possibility of shrinkage because these were drenched in red, if you get what I'm saying. These were drenched in red. So there could be shrinkage for that as well. Also, let's not forget, just because they don't fit him doesn't mean that they didn't fit somebody else. Think about that, too. And then somebody else said this as well. Nicole B just said this, you know, just because she bought him those latex, not those latex gloves, but just because she bought him those isotones does not mean that they're going to fit him entirely. So there's still a possibility that he... Wore them. There still is. Put skin to glove. You got to remember, wearing latex gloves, they're not easy. You see what I'm saying? They're not easy to, like, if you try to put something else on top of a latex glove, there's going to be grab. There's going to be, it's going to be tough. So those latex gloves, I think, again, if he did this, if he did this, these latex gloves helped him. These latex gloves helped him. Okay? That's just my theory. Okay? And this is what blew the lid off of everything. Oh, oh it doesn't fit him, so, you know, you must quit. If it, don't if it don't fit, you must convict. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. If it don't fit, you must acquit. Right? And that's actually what Johnny Cochran used and ran with. And think about this, too. Think about this, too. You don't think that they didn't have a conversation with OJ and have him try on some isotones, maybe around the same size, maybe the same make, have him put on some latex gloves and plan this whole thing out? Let's not forget that lawyer in the very beginning, uh, before they showed this part, he says, yeah, I was, I was poking at Chris, and he took the bait. Why? Because you had this planned? You had this totally planned. Think about it. You had this planned. You could have had time to sit on this, marinate on this, and think about, wait a second. If it don't fit it, it you must have quit. Let's mess with their brains. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't have the balls to, to, to have him wear those gloves. You ain't got the balls, Chris. And then what did Chris do? I got, I got, I got big balls. Okay, okay, my balls are big. My big, my balls are big. That I'm mousy. They're big. And then he made him wear them. That's where the mess up happened, or that's when defense starts winning. Period. Okay. So let's continue. Without making him try it on outside the presence of the jury earlier. All right, director, you like that Mr. Simpson has both. Gloves. Yes. When Chris started, decided to, in front of the jury, have OJ uh. put these gloves on. First of all, it shocked everybody that was watching it. No but doubt. it was a huge risk that didn't need to be taken. You could have had him put those gloves on in chambers, somewhere else, before doing it in front of the jury. As soon as OJ does this, it's over. Yep. They played that all wrong. The gloves, by the way, did fit. No one can get those gloves on when you have latex underneath. I'm not the 
oh my god i know i'm not the only one yeah see what i'm saying i ain't crazy you got latex gloves and you're trying to put your your hands into gloves i'm telling you right now if you got gloves just go and try it just try it for a second in, in in entertain yourself just for one second Take a trip down memory lane from 30 some odd years ago and just look at and just try it. Just try it and go, mm, nope, can't work. You're going to be doing this too. Oh, mm. it, it, it just won't go in. It just won't go in. See, see, it won't go in. It won't fit. This is where they screw the pooch, y'all. This is exactly where they screwed the pooch. And it was all because of someone was goading the prosecution. Ain't that crazy? Ain't that crazy? And I wonder how that whole conversation went down. Where they were even able to cross paths for him to turn to Chris, the defense, to turn to Chris, who was part of the prosecution, and go, you ain't got the cojones, bro, to pull out them gloves and then just fade into the darkness, just disappear into a bush. And then Chris go, I got big balls. My balls are big. I'm going to make them wear them. You know what I mean? The fact that they manipulated that is insane. And it's the one thing that saved O.J. Simpson from life in prison. Man, I'm going to play a little bit more. But this cop ain't wrong. Latex, trying to put latex gloves on and then try to put your, uh, uh, your hand, latex gloved hand, into a tight-fitting, remember, tight-fitting, form-fitting, Glove like isotones. It's going to be hard for you to do. Okay? Hoard for you to do. If <laughs> you really tried hard, it would have been impossible. Can we uh, ask him to replace the, uh, the left glove onto his hand? All right. I couldn't believe that they actually went through this whole thing and they didn't know what the outcome Come was on. going to be. Which, to me, was another thing that kind of turned the tide as to how I felt about uh, guilt or innocence in the case. Can we ask him to straighten his fingers and extend them into the glove that one normally might put a glove on? I object yes. to this statement by counsel. Uh, uh, uh. All right, he appears to have pulled the gloves on, counsel. Probably one of the biggest uh, prosecutorial bumbles in history. All right, will mm. you show that to the jury, Mr. Simpson, in the manner? Thank you. It was a debacle. Uh, it was just handled wrong, but believe me, the gloves fit. Did they... Did these did the prosecution did the lawyers from the prosecution prosecution side did they continue working from this point on because I feel like this is the moment what that would be like ooh you dropped the ball you know what I'm saying I'm just saying from the, the, because the defense played a very good game right here that's it it was a wrap after this it's like we got him Eureka you know what I'm saying we got that mother lover but I'm wondering if prosecution ever went on to continue working or if they said, well, no, we, <laughs> this was the trial of the century. They had one job and one job only. And yes, they let the juice loose. Yeah. Let's go. sum up the damage done to the state's case. The focus of the trial moving from the question of O.J. Simpson's guilt or innocence to whether or not the gloves fit. My thought was we have to do what trial lawyers have to do. We've got to go back to court the next day and keep presenting evidence. Yesterday after the, uh, the demonstration, mm -mm -mm. you stated while on the witness stand that ordinarily the defendant's hands uh, should have fit into the gloves. Is that correct? That's correct. And what did you mean by that? The gloves in the original condition would easily go on to the hand. Oh. 
would easily go onto the hand of someone of Mr. Simpson's size. We. You heard that, right? Hold on. We go on to the hand. Okay. What did you mean by that? The gloves in the original condition would easily go on to the hand. Okay. Or would easily go on to the hand of someone of Mr. Simpson's size. Would easily go on the hands of O.J. Simpson's size. But he was wearing latex gloves. Like I said, O.J. better have, like, given a whatever little bit of money he had left to the manufacturer of those latex gloves. Because he literally, he literally got away. He literally got an innocent ver verdict was acquitted by the, not even the skin of his own skin, but by the latex of this actual glove. I mean, that's insane. Literal, literally, like, skin type rubber, for crying out loud. Because even the man who is part of this company, part of Isotone, says, yes, that glove would have fit on OJ. <laughs> Crazy, yo. Crazy. Yeah, Johnny Cochran did did shoot. It, it, regardless of where you stand on it, man, he played that card and he he played it well. Let's keep it real. He played that card and he played it well. We Crazy. Had to view the videotape probably a dozen or more times with our glove expert from new york the gloves you saw yesterday did they appear to be in their original condition no they did not what was different about them the primary difference was the fact that due to the tremendous amount of liquid that had been on the gloves for a certain period of time the gloves appeared to be uh shrunken in size from their original condition they were you heard that we're talking about ladies and germs we're talking about shrinkage no, not that shrinkage. Because it, it was cold, but shrinkage. And there's a possibility of shrinkage to keep in the back of our minds. So you got shrinkage. Like, I can't believe I remember all this. This is how iconic this trial was and how big of a conversation this was every single day. I'm telling you right now, I remember school being paused and they were turning on TVs because we, you know, we had little TVs in, in the corners of our classrooms just so we can see the verdict. The entire school, my entire school was on pause. I'm not kidding. No, this wasn't like, oh, there's a, earthquake drill or a fire drill or oh we're we're watching the president give us some sort of update about some crazy attack that's going on on our country no the whole country stopped dead in their tracks to watch this verdict i think i was in the middle of math class if i'm correct and there it is boom verdict being told And man, so many people were like, whoa, so many people were shocked. So many, so many. The whole, whole school like erupt in reaction, whether it was like, yeah, or, oh, what? You know what I mean? It was insane. Okay. It paused everything. Everyone stopped dead in their tracks, turned on the TV. Boom. Boom goes the dynamite. But let's talk about shrinkage. It happens to us men from time to time. It gets cold out here sometimes. Okay? Just saying. But we're talking about gloves. Now, these gloves were drenched, soaking in red. There's a strong possibility of shrinkage. Then you have them wear gloves, wear latex gloves, 
and then try to have them squeeze that much. Did they they should at least like put some Vaseline on that KY jelly, something so that he can slide on in that glove without any problems. But did they do that? No, because they don't want to damage the evidence. But at the same time, of course, it's going to be hard for him to put that doggone thing on, man. And they even talk about shrinkage. Come on now. There are two things that helped him. One, he was in control of putting the glove on. And two, that glove had been soaked in blood and had presumably shrunk and was hard and stiff. So, of course, it was hard to get on. But when, oh, oh, I, can't, gee, I can't get this glove on. This is killing me. You know, he testified right there. He's an actor. Let's not forget that. He's an actor. Acting, you know, to be or not to be. That is the question. He is acting. Okay. Having a hard time putting on the glove. It's like a little comedy, physical comedy skit. He's just like, oh man, I'm having, look at this sketch. I'm having a hard time. Look at me having a hard time putting on this glove. There's so much. I'm so stuck. Oh my gosh. Jeez. Come on, guys. It's a bloody glove. Anyone in this courtroom knows that when a leather glove is soaked in any liquid, it becomes brittle when it dries. And the liquid you're referring to, is that blood? I'm, I'm not a technical expert. He's not qualified to answer that question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. So the gloves appear to have shrank somewhat. That's correct. Okay. How much? <laughs> Overall. Overall. It would appear, based upon my knowledge of what would occur when gloves are subjected to liquid such as water, that gloves could shrink approximately 15% from its original size. Uh, good morning, Mr. Rubin. Good morning. I thought you were leaving yesterday. So did I. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I, I guess the wah, events... Wah. I haven't asked the court any questions, really. Ask the question, Mr. Cochran. He a smooth operator, smooth operator. He's a smooth operator, man. I'm sorry. Johnny Cochran just, he just saunters up to the podium. You know what I mean? He just, he just had that swag goo. Okay. Let me, let me, let's continue. He had that swaggy, swaggy swagger. Okay. Let's keep it a buck. Let me ask the question. At no time ever prior to the demonstration Mr. Simpson, yesterday before this jury, you never talked to him about any shrinkage, had you? Shrinkage was discussed, yes. You talked to Mr. Darden about shrinkage? We discussed the possibility of shrinkage to a slight degree and that the gloves could be refurbished close to original size. We were aware that the gloves had been saturated with something and not reworked or reconditioned uh, for almost a year. Most people believe that uh, gloves over a period of time are stretched and they get bigger. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not a glove expert. I believe that it actually occurred here in the courtroom when we were looking at the gloves and I, for the first time we saw how crumpled they were and how short the fingers appeared. That was yesterday, is that what you're yes. saying? Okay. But when you testified yesterday, before Mr. Simpson was asked to put on those gloves, you never testified about any shrinkage, did you? I was never asked about any shrinkage. Can you answer my question? You never testified about any shrinkage, did no, you? No, I didn't. All right. And uh, today's the first time you ever talked about shrinkage connection to this case in court. Is that right? That's correct. Sim How many times did they say shrinkage? <laughs> There's a lot of shrinkage. He's angry. He's passionate about shrinkage. Simpson was having probably a true difficulty because that glove probably was shrunk in a position of maybe one size smaller that if you work the leather, you could probably stretch it out again if you oiled it. But now it's been dried blood for how long? What the jury saw. Wait, who is this? Who is, is that this right? again? That's correct. Simpson was. Oh, this is him. I was, I was about to say, ain't that Mark Furman? Boo. Having probably a true difficulty because that glove probably was shrunk in a position of maybe one size smaller that if you work the leather, you could probably stretch it out again if you oiled it. But now it's been dried blood for how long? But the jury saw. No one gives a damn about your opinions, Mark Furman. But let's continue. Uh, and I think what anyone who saw objectively was that Mr. Simpson couldn't put those gloves on because they're too small. 
it looked like he was performing a little bit with it and all but the bo- doesn't he look like he's performing with it a little bit don't you think kind of maybe sort of bottom line was that it, they weren't fitting him i don't think you could act the size of your hands and that's what this boiled down to he'd be a great actor if he could act and make his hands larger I mean, stop you can do that you can you can try to do some things to make it difficult to put on a glove come on man uh, i'll be right Never back guys his hand it was just moving both hands it was a it was it was a setup they just don't fit Mr. Dershowitz. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much, Your Honor, for accommodating my schedule. I'll try to keep it very brief, knowing that the jury is out this morning. We are very concerned about the possible specter of a mistrial hanging over this very lengthy trial. The defendant, O.J. Simpson, has the right to have his case decided by this jury and not some subsequent jury. Yesterday's uh, incidents and events make it as clear as any events could ever make it why the prosecution would benefit if they had a second opportunity to try this case. If the prosecution had a second opportunity, if they could do what when we were kids we called a do-over, obviously they would try this case rather differently. I doubt that we would see O.J. Simpson being asked to try on his gloves. I doubt that we would see Dennis Fong being called as a witness. The defense posture, their very premise is absurd. That we would like to try this case again because we would try it differently. We would not call Mr. Fung. I would like for Mr. Dershowitz, a law professor, to explain to us how we could put on evidence without proving someone critical in the chain of custody. If Mr. Dershowitz has an idea, I'd sure like to hear it. I was in court on three or four occasions. I argued a couple of motions live in court. And of course, I would have been the appellate lawyer. OJ regarded me as his God forbid lawyer, his insurance policy in case he got convicted. We are very concerned because we're down to two alternate juries that the prosecution in one respect has a no lose scenario that they may be attempting. Namely that they're trying to reshape the jury to its advantage by striking jurors selectively. And they know that the worst case scenario is that there will be a mistrial. And if there's a mistrial, they get to try the case a second time. That's precisely what the double jeopardy clause prevents the state from doing. Mm-mm-mm. If we don't speak out about this now, we don't have any jurors left. I am absolutely confident that the court has acted in a proper professional fashion in every instance in which the court has removed a juror from the jury. Do you think the prosecution really wants a mistrial? You know, you have to ask them for, for now. Uh, you have to ask them. We make two motions. One, that no further jurors be struck for any reason, whatever. And that once jurors are down to a number like 14, 13, 12, that the standard of removing jurors is no longer a good cause under California law. It rises to manifest necessity. This is a bold motion from Alan Dershowitz because basically he's saying, Judge Ito, you can't dismiss any more jurors. Well, that on its face is ridiculous, but it does have some merit in that both sides were seemingly picking off jurors that they didn't want, and it had now gotten to the point where 10 of the 12 alternates were gone. Of all of the motions made by the defense, I find this one the most offensive. This was a motion filed deliberately for inflammatory effect. It has no law in its support. It has no facts in its support. This is a scurrilous attempt to inflame the community, if not the very jury itself. What's unique about this case, Your Honor, is that the 10 jurors that have been disqualified up to now have not, not a single one, well, possibly one, but no more than one, has been disqualified for what would be the conventional reasons listed by the California Supreme Court as constituting (laughs) good cause in the context of manifest necessity. They have not been traditional cases of illness or death or 
family problems. They have been more in the nature of juror misconduct problems, which we believe are issues of law. And the court has said that dismissal of jurors on issues of law or any mm. mistake of law does not constitute manifest necessity. You know, uh, you know, obviously this this whole thing, <sighs> things were all over the place, obviously, with this this whole trial. Um, and of course, you know, we're going to have to look into a little bit more of this uh, a little bit later, um, a little bit later on. But that is, you know, obviously, I feel like there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, rekindling and replays of a lot of documentaries, a lot of information uh, revolving around this trial, because again, it is still, still dawn, the trial of the century. It is still one of the biggest unsolved cases ever. Did he have something to do with the deaths of those two, Ron Goldman and, and Nicole Brown Simpson? We don't know. We don't know. But it is very, very wild that it's just crazy how everything transpired, how that trial was. It was a circus. That trial was a circus, okay? It is pretty crazy. Um, so we still have the poll, okay, going on. Wow, over a 1,000 Votes. Wow, that's amazing, guys. Um, right now, it's at 75% him guilty, 10%, 11% now because somebody just voted. No, he innocent. And then, of course, 14% of you guys are saying, I'm still on the fence. That's crazy. That's really, really wild. Hey, and again, there is no wrong answer, you know, and that's unfortunate. The only reason why I say that is because we don't know. We don't know who did what and what was the truth and if he had anything to do with this or not. I mean, it's sad, y'all, but it's very, very true. It's very, very true. Uh, hold on one second. I just want to make sure I have. Ah, you know what? Even better. I have it right here. It'll make it a lot easier to play this rather than playing the whole doggone thing. This is, a, like I said, a very, very short clip that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, I interviewed uh, Cato Kalin, okay? He was the the roommate or like the housemate, okay? He lived in the guest house of O.J. Simpson's home. And uh, of course, you know, he came in, he was talking about hearing noises, et cetera. Um, and you've, of course, a lot of people were very interested in him. I, I guess the, there was a lot of people that thought he, he was a very attractive guy, blah, 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 during that time. Um, so he came onto the show or I had an opportunity to interview him. And so there was a very, very short moment that I was able to ask him basically one question. Okay. He was an actor out there in LA. What else is new? I feel like in LA, you can throw a rock and hit like 15 actors <laughs> with one rock. Okay. Um, and he was out there. He, had we, we you know we were, I asked him some questions, um, or I asked him one question, you know, and you know, of course, trying to just be respectful because, of course, the people that were handling him and all that were basically saying, "Hey, like, can you, you know, refrain from saying anything too much or asking too many questions about the trial and his relationship with OJ and all that?" So. I just asked him like one question. And so I got the clip right here. Let me share this with you. And this was from six years ago. So it's a long time ago. I had a co-host at that time, long, long time ago. And uh, so I wanted to share this with you guys. Again, I got to chop it up with Cato Kalin. Um, many, multi, many, many years. Okay. Decades later. Uh, after the trial and all that, and uh, got to ask him a question real quick. So here it is. Okay. O.J. Simpson has yeah. been released recently. Yes. Have you talked to him? Uh, is since he here? His, since his release. No, no. I yeah. I <laughs> Surprise guest. Yes. Come on now. <laughs> no, no. I haven't talked to anybody in the trial. I, 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 you know what? It's, it's a question I get asked a lot, and it's like, uh, what can you do about anything in the past? You can't do anything about behind you. Everything right. is about where I live now. Everything I move forward, I pay it forward. So everything I do is really about now and making things better in everybody's life. 
Nice. And that's why I'm blessed to have this stage and have the greatest people ever and make people happy. Hell and yeah. that's what I do. We can clap. So he doesn't really answer the question. He kind of averts the answer, but I'm going to play it one more time because it, it happens fast. Okay. okay. OJ Simpson has yeah. been released recently. Yes. Have you talked to him? Is since he here? His, since his release. No, no, I yeah. talk, I Surprise talk, guest, come on now. No, no, I haven't talked to anybody in the trial. I, 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 you know what, it's, it's a question I get asked a lot. And it's like, uh, what can you do about anything in the past? You can't do anything about behind you. Everything right. is about where I live now. And everything I move forward, and I pay it forward. So everything I do is really about now and making things better in everybody's life. Nice. And that's why I'm blessed to have this stage and Absolutely. have the greatest people ever and make people happy. Hell and yeah. that's what I do. We can clap to Pascal. that. See, so... Very interesting, right? He doesn't really He doesn't answer the question really. And clearly it's a, it 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 sounds like no, <laughs> he hasn't been in contact with him, but he really did. Yeah, Nicobe, he completely dodges the question the question. Reason why? I'm sure he gets that that question all the time. What are your thoughts on this? What do you think of this? Blah, blah, blah. So on and so forth. You know, but interesting, right? He just completely dodges the question. I don't blame him. It's all good. We had a very good conversation for the most part. We talked about a whole bunch of different things. You know, we just talked about his career and all that as well. But he just was not really willing to talk about that piece. Um, but clearly, it seems like this was not something that he was very interested in answering. And it, it does sound like, okay. And obviously, like, this is just my interpretation. I think he feels some type of way about OJ. Obviously. I mean, the first thing he says is, is he here? <laughs> Let's keep it real. Why you ask me that? Is he here? You know, um, I don't know. Something about it just makes me think that he's like, he's just not like then, you know what I mean? I wouldn't say that they're the tight, the tightest of friends, the closest of friends, you know, that's just the vibe I get. Okay. That's just the vibe I get. Well, let me get these super chats and stuff real quick. Bernice Rivas, thank you so much for the super sticker. I really do appreciate it. Mimi, thank you so much for those two uh, super stickers as well. Grace, what's up? Thank you so much. Uh, we should do a recap night and go through the whole trial together. Woo! That's not a recap night. That's like a recap couple days, okay? The whole trial, the whole doggone trial, that's, that's more than just one day. OK, that's more than just one night. But if it's kind of like the highlights type thing, we could definitely do something like that for show. We could definitely do that for show, for show. OK, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Mimi, thank you so much. Be kind and respectful to others and especially to our loved mods. Yes, please be kind in the chat, guys. I understand there's going to be people who feel some type of some type of way. There's going to be some people that. Think that he's innocent and there's going to be people that think that he is guilty as hell. I leave that up to you. I have my thoughts. I, I think that, again, I, I have my theories, okay? But my theories are not correct because I don't have anything to back them up, right? And I think it's the same thing for other people as well. No one has the right answer. So there's no reason to get upset or, you know what I mean, unless people are being offensive, okay? But outside of that, there is no wrong answer in this situation. I mean, aside from like aliens, you know what I mean? Aside from all that, there is no wrong answer because we don't have anything. All we have are what they have presented in court, the evidence that they presented in court, and how they presented their arguments and their narratives in court. How they played their cards is how they played their cards. If the defense manipulated prosecution, then that's how they played it. If they played dirty like that, then they played dirty like that. And it's not like they changed, uh, they said anything different. It's not like they, 
you could see like they were in there to win. Now, does that mean that they played dirty? Does that mean that they were protecting a guilty man? I leave that up to you guys. But their job is to represent their client and to present the best argument possible and presented in front of the judge and the jury. And, of course, the court of public opinion as well because this was all on TV every single day for weeks. Now, did defense do their job or no? I also do feel like prosecution could have done a whole lot more, could have done a lot better, not listened to things or been manipulated in the way that they were manipulated. I think that's really messed up, too, because was, there was a lot of factors going on on the prosecution side as well. They had a lot that they had that they could have buried OJ with, and they, they dropped the ball. So, yeah. Pretty crazy stuff, guys. I mean, you know, like I said, uh, there's no real, an there's no definitive answer here. And I wish there was a definitive answer to this because I think it would make things a lot easier for all of us if he was properly found innocent or guilty. Because I'm sorry, the glove thing, yes, Johnny Cochran turned that into a slogan, basically. And then if you have that in the back of your head, if it don't fit, you must have quit. I mean, it's catchy. It's hard to forget. You're a juror. You see how he's putting on. He's doing these, this pantomime of like having a hard time putting on these gloves. And all you hear is Johnny Cochran in the back of your head. If it don't fit, you must have quit. Of course, you're going to sit there and go, nah, he didn't do that. Nah, he, he, he's innocent. It's a little bit, you know what I mean? A little tough. So I guess the other thing is, is did prosecution themselves bring in the best argument? Defense played everything, every card that they could, and they played dirty. Did prosecution use every trick up their sleeves or no? Or was it just the gloves that just, just annihilated prosecution? Those are things that need to be put into the back of your brain. And of course, it is what it is. What's done is done. Maybe this monster, maybe this alleged person who did this died at the age of 76 yesterday. Maybe. Or maybe he's just an innocent guy whose ex lost her life in the most grisly, most gruesome way that I think anyone has ever seen at that time or heard about at that time. We've heard much worse now. I mean, we've heard many other cases and other tragedies where people have lost their lives in even worse ways since then. But still, at that time, pretty gruesome. Pretty gruesome stuff. But let me let me end this poll real quick. Out of twelve hundred, over twelve hundred votes, I appreciate you guys putting in your your two cents on here. Uh, do you think that OJ did these the this tragedy, uh, the uh, Nicole Brown and and Ron Goldman tragedy? Seventy five percent of you guys say yes, him guilty. Thirteen percent of y'all say I'm still on the fence. And ten percent of you guys say no. He innocence. Interesting. That is interesting. That's that's interesting. Hold on, I got a comment here. I want to grab here. Where did it go? Carla said, um, it's the responsibility of the judge, uh, the jury, I'm sorry, to remain unbiased, to not draw conclusions about day uh, about one day in, in court during a nine month trial. That moment shouldn't have decided if they were unbiased. You know what? I agree 110%. I agree as well. 
that shouldn't have, shouldn't have been the smoking gun, you know, or the annihilator of the entire trial. Oh, if it don't fit, you must have quit. No, there's so many other options and so many other possibilities in that as well. All right. To put in consideration. Again, he could very well be innocent, guys. We 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 don't have any evidence showing proof of his innocence and proof of his guilt. Yes, there's other things like he had a nick on his hand. Uh, he had like a cut on his hand. Uh, there, were, there was evidence that was found inside the car, allegedly, but because they were throwing the, the crooked cop card into this whole thing, that made the situation even worse, and that made it tough because L.A. cops were already looked at in a very, very bad way because of what happened with, with um, Rodney King and the, in the trial that happened with those, with those cops. They all got let go. Mark Furman being heard saying the N-word 15 million times in, in recordings and whatnot. Not so good. Not so good. But the defense threw those cards on the table. It's like, blah, you got crooked cops. You got this black man on trial. Unaliving a white woman. We got all this to play. Here they are. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, Mark Furman? Oh, no, he, he bad. They could have planted the evidence. So on and so forth. That's what the defense was starting to lay out. And then the gloves. Like I said, it was... It, regardless of what side you guys are on, whether you think he's innocent or you think he's guilty, the defense did their damn thing. They did that damn thing. They most definitely did. Like one of the comments that we had, one of the members' uh, comments said, it was one of the best dream teams in, in on the defense side in in courtroom history, in trial history. I agree. They came in and they played and they manipulated and they they put out that narrative. They laid things out to the jury and and especially during those times during a very tumultuous time where racial tensions were extremely high people were still getting over that rodney king verdict hangover literally they played that they used those cards and it got them the win it got them it helped get oj get his acquittal Interesting, y'all. Pretty wild stuff. Pretty wild stuff. But still, no matter what. For those of y'all who think or believe that OJ is innocent, then who did it? And why would they target Nicole Brown Simpson, of all people, and Ron Goldman? Why? Those are things to put in consideration because I, I keep wondering what's what's going on. You know, what's going on here? Was it another disgruntled ex-lover of Nicole Brown's? Was it a disgruntled ex-lover of Ron Goldman's? Something to think about. Pretty crazy stuff. But I am going to be trying to reach out to Cato Kalen. I'm going to see if I can get him back on. Maybe he'll give us a quick soundbite, you know, put in his thoughts about everything. Maybe. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what I can do. It's been a minute since I've reached out to him and talked to him. It's been a minute. But uh, we always had a good rapport. So I'm going to reach out to him and see, see what's good. But like I said, it's, it's just crazy. It's, it, this, this whole case is crazy. Th this, that whole trial, that whole case is absolutely crazy. And I keep, I'm going to keep asking you guys, what say you? What are your thoughts? Do you think he had something to do with this? Do you think he's innocent? Do you think he did this alone? If you think he did it, do you think he did it alone? Or do you think he had other people helping him in this situation? It's something to think about, right?
Yeah, I heard something about that too, Lily. The theory about his eldest son doing this and then he him just taking the rap because he wanted to save his son. I heard that as well. You know, I heard that as well, Lily. And I don't know. I don't know what to think. You know what? Uh I am I'm gonna open up the phone lines just for a second, okay? Let's see. Shoot. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to open up the phone lines just for a second. All right. So I'm going to say this, of course, keep it short. Keep it sweet. Please be respectful. If you're an ass, I'm going to hang up on that ass. That's all it is. Simple as that. OK, but give me a call. Love to hear your thoughts. All right. On this. Do you think he was involved? Do you think he's innocent? I just want to hear your thoughts. You know, just a quick speak on it. All right, just a quick speak on it. Hold on. Let me pull that up. Yep, just a quick speak on it. We, let's have a conversation. Let me hear your thoughts. All right? Because, you know, even so, even though I have my thoughts and my theories and my feelings about all this, I still have, you know, I have a few, you know, I, 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 I'm constantly, I constantly have some, a little bit of pushback. You know what I mean? I'm constantly pushing back like, well, but maybe, but then it's like, oh, no, but he did. No, but then maybe, you know, I, I bounce back and forth. Okay. Love to hear your thoughts. Hold on one second. Hey, you on the mic with the Pascal show. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello? Hold on. What the heck is going on? Hold on, let me try that one. Hey, you're on the mic with the Pascal Show. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello? What? This is tripping. Hold on, guys. Don't call in yet. Sorry, give me two seconds. Let me see if something's up here. Uh Uh-huh. That might be it. Okay. Let's try that again. Okay. Try calling, guys. Sorry about that. I don't know why that was tripping. All right. Hey, you on the mic with the Pascal Show? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, um, my name is Sabrina. Hey, so Sab- I'm calling. Hey, Sorry, go ahead. Uh, well, actually, yeah, can you um can you uh put the show in mute on mute in the background? That'd be really oh, appreciated. Okay, I'm in another room. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, And everybody in the chat, please hit the number one if you guys can hear Sabrina, right? Yes. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Queens, New York. Okay, from Queens, New York. What's on your mind? Speak on it. Okay, well, I think, I mean, I mean, condolences to his family and everything. But, I mean, going back to the case and everything, I think he did it. I don't think anybody else was involved. If anybody else was involved, I would think, like, you know, they would have been came out with something, right. you know, trying to gain more money off of the case and everything. So that's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> oh, you're good. You're good. I, I appreciate you calling in. Um, Yeah. I, I, I'm curious about it, too. Like I said, there's no definitive answer. So it's it's really, you know, it's easy for us to lean on one side or the other. Uh, But, yeah, it's 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 tough. It's, it's, it's tough to. Mm-hmm come up with something when there's no well i have yet to see any like smoking gun evidence on my end um but i do have my theories right but um sabrina i appreciate you calling in thank you thank you all right (laughs) bye-bye okay yeah i mean again this is a tough one hey you on the mic with the pascal show what's your name where you calling from Hi, I'm Carla from Seattle, Washington. I've talked to you before. This is Debbie. This is Debbie, you said? 
Carla from oh, Seattle. Oh, Carla. Sound like Debbie. Thank you so much for calling in from Seattle. <laughs> uh, what's on your mind? Yes. Speak, speak on it. Well, well, thank you for giving us this opportunity to just kind of speak our minds. Yeah. So I come from a legal background. You know, I, I was just a very young legal assistant watching the trial back then. And, you know, I'm up 50 years old, so I was in my 20s. And we all remembered this how but how the situation in LA was just so racially divisive. And it, I just looked back at, on it and I was talking to attorneys and we called it during that time. We said, you know what, OJ is not going to be found guilty because it will be retaliation for Rodney King. You know, it was, it really was a time in LA when it was the cops versus, you know, everyday people. And, 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 it, and for me, it just, it, it just makes me sad looking back on all of this because because they, it was just very hard for, for the state and for the defense to find an unbiased jury, thus giving us like a really, you know, a, you know, what was, um, um, the, you know, the ability to just, to just, for OJ and for the victims to have a, a fair trial. And I think that's the, like the biggest takeaway and the biggest injustice of all of it. What do you think? I, I, I absolutely agree. I think that there was a huge manipulation that was involved here. Um, absolutely. Done by the defense, um, using the media, using the, like you said, the, 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 the racial tension, um, what was going on in the streets, what the, the everything. I think that they were able to use all of this to their favor. Um, and now, what's also interesting is that, you know, jury, the juries, the jurors were not allowed to like have any contact with the outside world. So as soon as they left the courtroom, they go into their little, you know, hotel rooms or whatever, and they're just basically shut off from the rest of the world. So it is kind of interesting. Like I said, it's how it was all presented. It's the presentation from, from Simpson's defense team that was able to take home this W in a way. Um, but I think there was a lot of manipulation for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely. think that there was, I think there was like a little bit of like them playing dirty and then you got the prosecution trying to do it by the book. And I think that's where you see a difference. You see, yeah, until Chris messes up, because he, I guess maybe his ego, whatever it may be, with the gloves, but he, I think that they were both trying to do the defense, or the prosecution was trying to do everything by the book to a certain extent, and then you got OJ's team that's willing to do whatever it takes to take this home as a, as a win. They were willing to play dirty, Right. And these guys weren't, mm -hmm. and of course, you know, the prosecution was not. So I thought, I think that's very interesting to, to see that too. You know what I mean? Just that this, those dynamics yeah, in the courtroom. Was, this, Go ahead. Exactly. I'm sorry. And this is during the time, this is during the time before we, we, you know, we're like, we know so much more about live trials and that kind of thing. But I truly think in looking back on it and so did my colleagues that, that the trial itself should have been moved to another county. You know, oh. that's that's very routine now because because it was going to be televised, because it was going to be in the media and all of that. Um, I, I, I think that was a poor decision on their part to keep it within um, that county. It was just, I think it should have been tried somewhere else. I, I will say this. I agree with that, too, because, I mean, you got to remember, there were people outside the the uh, the building where the court where the uh, trial was being held. Uh, they were outside the courthouse protesting, putting up, you know, putting up their flyers or their their banners and all that stuff. I mean, it was insane. Like I said, it was a full on media and uh, political circus. I'm mean, not political, public circus out here where people were feeling very much some type of way about all this. And like I said, it was right on the coattails, riding on the coattails of that verdict for Rodney King's cops. And all that. This is, I think, what weren't the riots at from uh, the uh, Watts riots? Weren't they a part, like right before uh, the trial as well? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, exactly. uh, So the racial yeah. tension in America in general was absolute. I mean, you could cut it with a knife during that time, 
And yeah, I think that they were able to use the race card. I think that they were able to use a lot of different cards. Um, but the one thing that took out that blows the the race card right off the water, right right off the table, I'm sorry, was the gloves. He was able to run with that and turn it into a doggone slogan. It was like Coke is it. Okay. It was, you know, Burger King, have it your way. The gloves. If it don't fit, you must have quit instantly. Boom. Just buried into that brain matter for all of those jurors. And then when they go in there and de de deliberate, it's like, well, the gloves don't fit. So we must have quit. Right? Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was, like okay. I said, he was a smooth operator. He was able to use those, use that in AT, uh, uh, AT alien. Yeah. I mean, literally it's, it was bars, literally bars. And, uh, and it worked yeah. in their defense, you know? And I think afterwards, I think it was, it, it was an um, irony that was pointed out by his closest friends, he, you know, because it was a mostly black jury that, that acquitted him. You know, they, they saw, his, they saw what they thought was his innocence. And it was ironic in that his, um, friends said that OJ never engaged with the black community in LA, was never supportive of them, really just didn't support them. But in the end, the irony was that the black community in LA saved him. G saved his age. Uh, he even said, I'm yeah. not black, I'm OJ. Allegedly, he said something along the lines of that. Like, I'm not, he doesn't, he didn't even consider himself, like, come on. You know what I'm saying? Like, Man, mm -hmm. you know, know. we know then, those people. Yeah. I'm a person of color. I'm an, I'm an American Indian woman, and we know those people of color who right. try to act like they're not, you know, that they're white. Yeah, white. and then suddenly, I'll say it. I'll it, say it. <laughs> yeah, no, you good. You can say it. You know, we can say it. It's all good. You know what I mean? Shoot, everyone can say that. All right. Because I mean, let's be real. <laughs> At first, it was it was one thing, and then the next scene, you know what I mean? And now it's like, oh, my black people, I need you. I needed to come here and uh -huh. you know and and have me in solidarity when you weren't even claiming that before. So what the heck is going on here? But you know, at the same time, I get what he was. Okay, I'm not trying to defend OJ. Let me just say that really quick. But I do understand <laughs> that he was okay. basically trying to say like, okay, my brand is beyond my race. Okay, I get it. I get it. But at the same time, man, those people did have your back. You know what I mean? The black community definitely had your back during that time. So, yeah, like I said. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's for, interesting. Yeah. And, yeah. And for me, it was very telling because, you know, we've covered so many cases. You've helped us cover so many cases where innocent families, they never stop looking for the killer. If, you know, they never stop finding out and seeking justice for somebody in their family or a family member or a friend who had died. OJ never tried to find out. No. Like, he had money to do this, to find out, like, who killed the woman who, you know, who, um, the woman of my, um, the mother of my children, the woman that he reportedly loved and, and respected. He never tried to find out. You know what? What happened? With you, that yeah. you have a solid point right there. Not once did he bother to take any of the resources that he had to seek, to seek clarity and justice for these these murders. Not once that that we know of. And I get it. It's not like he's going to mm -hmm. go like, "Hey, everybody, I'm doing some private investigation, trying to find out who did this to Nicole Brown Simpson." Like, no, I I get it that that's not going to happen. But he's not going to go and do that. But then again, maybe he should have. Then everyone would have been like, "Oh, mm -hmm. okay, okay, we see you." Go on, go on then. Figure it, figure it out. We we got you, bro. Figure it out then. But no, yeah. he doesn't do that. He just goes. Yeah. And, he, yeah. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <sighs> it's frustrating, y'all. Yeah. It's frustrating. Yeah. It's frustrating. It but thank you so much thank for calling you so in. So much for this. Of course, yeah. of course. I appreciate you calling in. All right. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. That was a good. That was a good call. I'm gonna I'm gonna end it right there. Okay. No more calls, guys. No more calls, okay? Speak on it is over. But that's a good point. It's a solid good point. Now, I mean, I feel like, okay, she she made, she made pointed out a lot of good points, okay? Obviously, race card was definitely thrown on the table for show, okay? For the defense. They used that like crazy. They used the, the anger and frustration of the people, 
okay, of the streets because there was a lot going on and there was a lot of injustices that were going on. I uh, am absolutely with the public during that time with the Rodney King verdict. That was absolutely ridiculous. My mind was blown. And those were a lot of dirty, dirty cops. And I'm sure there were even more dirty cops than just those guys that were standing in that trial. Okay. I got to be real. But there was a lot of people very angry about all that. And they were able to use those things as playing cards. Okay. For this particular trial. They were able to use that. Should they not had used it? I'm not going to sit here and say no. I'm not. Because you have to put those factors in there. If you got an if you got an officer that's coming in that's going to stand trial <laughs> and testify against OJ, but he has he has recordings of him saying unthinkable things about people of color using slurs and whatnot. Yeah, that's not a great look. That's putting in reasonable doubt into the jury's minds. Just to start off with. And then everything else, you know what I mean? It's a one big snowball effect and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and it just gets crazier and crazier, right? But the defense was able to use that stuff to their advantage. Now, is that them playing dirty? Could be. But then again, it may not be them playing dirty, maybe just throwing out facts and what the rest of the country, uh, you know, what, what the streets are saying and what the tensions are out here in these streets. But I'm telling you right now, those gloves were definitely going to fit his hands. You heard it from the one of the he- higher ups of Isotone's company saying that those gloves are definitely made to fit his hands. Yes, they talk about shrinkage, 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 shrinkage. There's a lot of shrinkage going on, for sure. Okay? But they didn't put any of those factors in there. And then, of course, he was acquitted. So it's pretty crazy and wild stuff. But again, that last caller had a very good point. Not once at least from our general knowledge to public knowledge, not once have we heard OJ go out of his way to put pour money into private investigators, the detectives, whatever, to find out who actually did this unthinkable grisly crime to his ex-wife. And I get it that they may not have gotten along. They, they may have had a tumultuous relationship. There was a lot of alleged A going on in that relationship before they got divorced, that apparently she was savagely attacked by him all the time because of his jealous rage. Okay, you put all those things into consideration. Okay, you have all that. But at the same time, he could have done something to figure this out, to try to get closer to finding the truth and to exposing who did this to Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman. And we never heard anything about that, y'all. We haven't heard anything about him doing anything of that sort. And I think that's really sad. Okay? And the behavior, yeah, uh, Priya, yeah. But his behavior in in the Bronco, it's very weird. It's very, very weird. I ain't going. What? All that is very, it's questionable. It's suspicious. Would somebody who's innocent go into, sit in the back of a Bronco with a weapon and do what he did and make a huge public display like that? I don't know. I don't know, guys. Pretzel, thank you so much. The only shrinkage that was happening on national TV back uh, back then was George Costanza. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the pool time shrinkage. Absolutely. I'm wondering if that. I'm, I'm wondering the timeline. I'm wondering if shrinkage happened. That episode of shrinkage happened before or after this this uh, that moment in this trial because uh, it's interesting. Okay, but definitely funny moment, right? 
It was cold. Right. Um, shoot. I didn't even watch uh, Seinfeld, but all those big moments I know about because they were just so big in pop culture back then. Right. I didn't watch that show at all. I think the only episode I saw of uh, Seinfeld was the last episode because everybody was like, oh, it's the last episode. So I went and watched it. And I'm like, okay. And that was, that's the show. Cute. Moving on. Right. But nonetheless, back to the case. Very interesting situation. I got a lot of questions about it. You know? And it is weird how he was moving out here in these streets even after the fact, even after he was acquitted. Like I said, I'd be, who I'd be watching every move I made. I'd be very, very methodical. I'd overthink every single step I made. I would not be out here trying to do photos and taking selfies with people and whatnot. Nah, I'd be living by, living off the grid, away from the craziness, and just trying to live the rest of my life with happiness and positivity. I would not be on the on the phone. I, I would not be on social media. I would not be looking up my, like I would literally just be so far away, so far disconnected that hopefully I, I would hope that people would just forget, right? But this guy, yeah, Nicole B, you know, he was out here. He could, he was, it seemed as if he was gloating. Pretty crazy stuff. Pretty crazy stuff. But that is the show, guys. I guess the question is still remaining. Will there ever be justice for those two? I don't know. Only time will tell. I also do think that somebody out there knows the truth. That's still alive. That may know the truth. But again, OJ Simpson lost his life to cancer at the age of 76 guys 76 years old craziness anyway guys i appreciate all y'all for being here please do me a favor hit that like button down below crush it do that ting that really mean a lot all right i'd really appreciate it of course do not forget to crush that subscribe button again hit that follow button Hit that subscribe button. Follow me on TikTok and all that stuff. All right? We got a lot of stuff to talk about. There's many, many things we need to talk about. I, I'll be on a little bit later on today. We got some discussions that we need to have here very, very soon. Okay? And, uh, yes, Carla, thank you so much for calling in and, and putting in your two cents. You had very strong points there for sure. Okay? Very solid points there. But anyway, guys, I appreciate all the phone calls, all the, all the super chats, super stickers. It really does mean a lot. We will be on a little bit later on this afternoon. We got some stuff we got to talk about and uh, cover. All right, before the night's end. So be on the lookout for that. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that notification bell. Make sure that is set to all. So you know whenever I go live, whenever I upload, because it's going to be random. All right? Anyway, guys, it's time to get going. I appreciate all y'all. Check out that uh, merch channel, PascalMerch.com. If you want to support the channel, check out my Patreon. It's on the t in the ticker going that way as we speak right underneath me, Patreon.com forward slash the Pascal Show. Or if you're watching on YouTube and you want to become a member, just hit that join button down below and become a member. Anyway, guys, it is time to get going. Okay? Much love to you guys. Have a great rest of your day. I got some things I got to take care of, so I'm going to see you guys in a little bit. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. I'll talk to you guys soon. This is the Pascal Show. Bye. Bye.